Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. The wife decided to dance on the dance floor, but with whom? Today's story with a similar plot. Enjoy watching it. It was like my normal Saturday. I was mowing a two-acre property with a lawnmower for my dad's boss. Back then, it was an 8-10 to 10 hour job for which I was paid as much as $10. At 10 years old, I thought it was good money. This year was my third and last summer. Now I was getting my $10. The boss's wife said I was too old. My father even paid for gas. It took me years before I realized why the boss's daughter, who was about my age, would often come out of the house, sit on a chair on the patio, and watch me work. This seemed strange to me. If I needed to drink water, I would get it from the outside hose. I never knew her name and never asked. Like my father, I was a hard worker and she was considered a member of the upper class. Her father's house was built on Snob Hill, where all the rich families lived. When I finished, I knocked on the back door and one of the kitchen workers called my father to take me home. The following Monday, when my father returned home, he always had money for the work I had done. This Saturday, everything changed. I saw her walk into their pool and not get up. I ran into the area, dove into the pool fully clothed, and pulled her out. In her eyes, I was an evil animal. Although the girl tried to explain to her mother, she did not listen, she was lying. As a result, I was fired on the spot. I finished work that day and did not return. When I finished working in the yard, my clothes were drying in the sun. Keith McKibben's daughter watched me from the upper balcony for the rest of the day. I was afraid to face my father on the way home. I told my father what happened, he said he believed me. Keith McKibben's wife, he said, was just looking for an excuse to get rid of me, she has mental problems and never leaves the house, my father said. As a result, her husband Keith had to do everything. On Monday, when he came home from work, my father brought me a huge $50 bill. This was the first time I saw one in my life at 13, I thought I was rich. When I asked him why, my father said it was a bonus from his boss for saving his daughter's life. Remember, son, that what you say and do can be verified by someone else. In this situation, truth one, Keith McKibben noticed bruises on his daughter's body that she tried to hide. They started appearing about six months after her wedding to Evan McBride. Evan was a rough man born with a silver spoon because his family was rich. Evan was smart, he never hit her where clothes couldn't hide it. He himself accidentally discovered what was happening. Evan could never appreciate the value of honest work. His daughter Irene was just as stubborn and headstrong as he was and wouldn't even admit to him what was really going on. The simplest thing could have been the trigger that sent Evan over the edge. Everything he did went to the extreme, he thought he was taller and better than everyone else. This was noticeable in everything he did. Keith vowed to himself that he would get his daughter out of the nightmare she called marriage, he saw this as enslavement. The question that had been bothering him for weeks was how could he achieve this? He didn't know what she saw in him, but no matter how hard she tried to maintain a relationship she didn't deserve, she was old school. She made the bed and would stay there. Unfortunately, she learned this value from him because of his life path. She needed a white knight to push her thinking and change her perspective. He knew about one thing, but it was many years ago since they separated not of their own free will but due to life circumstances. His ex-wife saw him as nothing more than a man without class and treated him as nothing more than a servant. He wondered how such a young boy could be so confident in doing the job he had been hired to do for so long. He was the only boy he had ever hired to cut the lawn who didn't have to accompany the lawnmower to trim the edges. It came to him in the darkness of the night, he woke up with knowledge staring right in front of him. The white knight was single from his daughter's childhood and worked in the capital according to his father. His father was a group leader at one of the factories he owned and one of the union leaders of the union. Over the years, he had worked his way up from being a floor sweeper to being a valuable employee everyone at the factory respected him. He would promote Bill Davis to manager and provide a five-year paid membership at the Meadows Golf Club, which was in dire need of fresh blood to survive. Once a month, the club held a free dinner in honor of new members and their guests. It would be easy to suggest that Bill invite his son, it was a risky game but worth a try. I never saw Keith McKibben in his house, 
I only saw him a couple of times in my life. We both continued to live our lives. I worked in the state capitol as a junior accountant for a national firm, having graduated three years ago with a degree in corporate merger accounting. Like all newbies, I had to do the hard work behind the scenes. It was the last day of the week when my father unexpectedly called me. He wanted to know if I could come home and attend an event at the Meadows Golf Club. The exclusive club was intended only for members and their guests. In order to gain membership, one had to obtain board approval. For many years, my father dreamed of just seeing the building from the inside. Membership dues then amounted to about $2,000 a year, it was a lot of money for him. He could never imagine justifying the expense since raising his children came first. I knew it was important to him. I asked him how he got to this place. My dad said, Keith McKibben just promoted me to manager, and that included an all-expenses-paid membership. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the evening at the club's restaurant, mom and dad are waiting for a welcome dinner for new members and their guests. After this, they're expected to attend a ballroom dance, formal attire is required, so please attend. I was pleased to be asked, but I had other plans, this would be my first date in months. My father said, your mother and I want you to be our first guest. I gave up, I said that I would leave as soon as I collected my business suit and shoes from the apartment, saying that I would be home around midnight. I was proud of my father's success, his years of hard work and dedication were finally rewarded. I later learned that the years have not been kind to Keith McKibben. He was now confined to a wheelchair and divorced. His companion for the evening was an old friend, the sister of his brother's wife. When I first arrived with my parents, before I could even sit down, I saw him. Keith was a proud man and deserved to be treated as such. Out of respect for the man, I immediately walked up to Keith to shake his hand. His friend asked me how I knew him, I replied, you never forget the person who gave you your first job. This seemed to bring great joy to his face. Keith and I had a great conversation about everything, I think I helped make the dinner a success for him. His companion, in a private conversation during the dance, said that she had not seen him in such a good mood for months. I think it might be because of you. We were in a ballroom that was only used once a month, like my father, I was delighted with everything. It was an honor to be allowed into such a majestic place. I danced several times with both Keith's friend and my mother. I was escorting my mother back to our table when an unknown lady entered the room fashionably late. It seemed to me that everyone in the room was looking at her the same way as I was. I asked, who is this lady who made the whole room freeze? My mother said, it's Keith's daughter Irene. I wondered where her husband was. She said very quietly, speaking so that no one could hear, she added, I wonder when she will finally come to her senses and leave her worthless husband. Sounds like you're saying he's in trouble. I whispered, rumors say that he likes to use his fists on her when he drinks too much, which happens quite often. Just hearing that made me want to beat him up because no woman ever deserved that. Irene was already at our table when we returned. I never would have imagined that the skinny kid I knew when we were little would turn out to look so good. I couldn't help but notice how her face lit up by sunlight. She was the kind of woman who could hold your attention for the rest of the night, making you wonder where the hours went when you said goodbye. Her father's companion went to introduce me, Irene interrupted, telling Jamie that you will never forget the person who saved your life. I would recognize Thomas anywhere. Irene stood up and walked around the table towards me, so I stood up out of politeness. I was a little taller than her and wanted to take in as much of her as possible. To me, she was so beautiful. Taking my hand, she said, You were going to ask me to dance, weren't you, Mr. Thomas Richard Davis? I smiled and replied, Of course, asking myself how I got so lucky. I took her to the dance floor, I got the impression that many jealous men were watching us. It was a good two-step, so it was easy for me to maintain a respectful distance. As soon as it was over, I wanted to go back because I felt outdone, but she said one more thing. Then she suddenly leaned over and kissed me tenderly on the cheek. I still have to thank you for what you did back then, Irene said. I've thought about you often over the years, Tom. I just happened to be there at the right time, that's all, I replied as the music started playing. Irene entered, pressing her hot right body against mine. I couldn't help it as we danced a slow waltz and I felt myself getting aroused. The smell emanating from her sensual body sent me signals. 
Like any normal person, I could not resist. In heels, Irene stood just over 5 feet 8 inches, had long shoulder-length blonde hair, and a body built more for comfort than speed. I've never been attracted to women made of skin and bones. I like them just like my mom, with a little meat. Her perky, full breasts stood out, and the dress she was wearing allowed the fullness of her cleavage to be seen. She was a plump, healthy woman with all the curves in the right places, and it showed. Her blue eyes, as she looked at you, seemed to invite you in. I didn't try, but I knew she could feel it pressing against her. She smiled back and whispered in my ear as we danced, thank you for making me feel like a desirable woman again. She loved it when I blushed and giggled about it for the rest of the night. When we returned to our table, I felt that something had changed, but I didn't know what. I guess I thought she was just being polite. Keith's face lit up, my father would later say that he had not seen Keith so happy for many years. During the group's first break, Irene explained how I saved her life when we were little and was rewarded for it. When her mother fired me because she thought I was attacking her, it appears Keith's ex-wife developed a fear of men and then divorced him when she decided she was going to become a nun. Last year, I started going through teenage puberty, and that's why they let me go. I became too big in her eyes. From then on, it was just him and his daughter. Irene and I talked a little about what I do in life. She asked if I was married. I replied that not yet, I just haven't found the right one yet and haven't been seriously looking. I talked about my degree and that I work for a corporate accounting firm. Irene said it was nice to have an honest conversation with someone who treated her as an equal. Keith's eyes brightened, and a smile appeared on his face. I saw his thoughts turn around, for some reason, he seemed interested in our developing relationship. Now I'm the CEO of the board of directors that runs this place, our controller is retiring in three months. Could you please send us your resume? Keith asked. Sure, of course, I said, guessing he was just being polite. As long as I can tour the place to see what I can apply for. Why? Keith asked curiously. By looking at the little things underneath the glamour, I will have a clear picture of what is wrong and what is right in the whole operation. Before I move on to anything new, I need to come to an understanding of a few things, I answered. I won't do anything blindly, I learned this the hard way mowing a two-acre plot for almost three years. This caused Keith and my father to laugh together. As soon as the music started, Irene pulled me out onto the dance floor again. I spent the rest of the night dancing with Jamie and Irene. Keith McKibben handed me his business card with his email address. I've arranged for you to have a personal tour tomorrow at 1 o'clock with one of the guards, Keith said. I spent four hours the next day going over the ins and outs of things. I learned that a lot of little things didn't add up, the current CFO saved on everything possible. I decided to check a few things, and fortunately, I did. I sent him my resume at his request a few weeks later, thinking I would never hear from him again. How wrong I was. One day, my boss at the company called me into his office. Are you unhappy about something here, Thomas? He asked. What prompted this question? I asked. I received a phone call about you from Keith McKibben, asking about you. He asked a lot of questions during our hour-long conversation. What does it all mean? Asked my boss. I spent the next half hour in his office explaining my connection to my father and his family. Well, I checked on Keith McKibben. He's an important man who owns his own steel company. His five plants run three shifts. Thanks to the president's favorable view of the steel industry, he's expanding to six. Most of the people he checked personally later found out that he's already decided to hire them, my boss said. Be prepared for the offer that will soon follow and give it serious consideration. Those who have gone to work for his company have had very successful careers because he is very dedicated to his employees. Based on what I knew, I began to learn everything that could go into running a golf club. I was surprised how little I actually knew. A friend of a friend's grandfather was a major figure in golf, and he told me to talk to him. He made me talk directly to him, and I enjoyed talking to him. We burned telephone lines several nights. There wasn't a question you wouldn't answer. Keith's offer came a couple of weeks later. My boss was right. I'd be stupid not to consider it. This offer was more than double my current salary. The board wanted me to be the new CFO at Meadows Golf Club. It was an offer I couldn't refuse. I notified the landlord. 
I told my boss, after he read the offer, that if they could offer me the same, I would stay. He didn't even say anything, I saw the expression on his face. After 15 years at this company, I don't even make that much. This offer will put you on the same salary as my boss at this company, my boss said. Take the offer and run. Use the signing bonus he offers you to put a down payment on a house. Two weeks later, on a Friday evening, I quietly entered my parents' house using the same key I'd had since I was a teenager. Things from my apartment were donated to charity. I didn't have much because most of what I earned was spent on paying off my student loans. I have lived as frugally as possible for the past three years. As a result, my student debt was quickly paid off. The rest, which wasn't much except the clothes, was in my used car. On Monday, I will start my new career. Not wanting to disturb my parents, I went to sleep on the living room couch. In the morning, my parents were surprised to see me and insisted that we go to the club for dinner and then to the bar for a couple of cocktails. After dinner, I apologized around one, explaining that I had a meeting. It was a long, tense three-hour conversation with the bank that financed the club, which ended with me signing my signing bonus as collateral. My parents didn't know why I came home, they were just happy that I was here. We headed to the Meadows Golf Club restaurant complex for dinner. As we passed through security, the same guard who gave me the tour recognized me. I was given a temporary club employee ID, which I immediately put in my wallet. The security officer informed me that there would be no bartender in the club tonight, the general manager was informed and was considering closing the bar. I told him to call him and let him know that no, we won't be closing. I explained that my bartending license got me through university for four years. I turned to the guard, asking him to show me the way so that we could prepare everything. One of the two guards took me behind the bar where, together, we found everything we needed. I quickly looked around and asked one of the employees how they kept current accounts, even this system was old and needed a major update. Everything was as bad as I expected. There would be a three-piece band performing that night, and the dance floor was the perfect size for the number of seats. I introduced myself to the wait staff as the replacement bartender for the night. I took off my jacket, rolled up my sleeves, but left on my vest and tie. I served those at the bar and kept the waitresses busy with the speed with which they received their orders. For some reason, the staff told me that the place was unusually crowded this evening. Personally, I thought it was slow. I was busy serving customers at the bar when I heard loud swearing and shouting from the dance floor. This forced the group to stop playing. I walked out from behind the bar and ran onto the dance floor just as a huge man was about to punch a woman in the face. He held her tightly, swearing, raising his hand. I grabbed his arm forcefully, forcing him to turn towards me. It happened so quickly that I didn't have time to see who the woman was. A face full of anger and rage stood before me. I was preparing for what would happen next. If push comes to shove, he will usually react without thinking. I've faced a lot of problems because it was impossible to know what this person would do. I'm sorry, sir, I can't allow this type of behavior in this establishment. What you are about to do could land us in a lawsuit. You should leave and come back when you can control your anger issues, I said. Who are you, he said in anger. What gives you the right as an employee to tell me anything? He made a mistake by rushing towards me, swearing that he will destroy me all for interfering. Security arrived just in time to see me duck under his raised arm as he threw a punch. I then responded, using all the strength in my body. I hit him as hard and fast as possible right in the stomach. When he automatically bent over in pain, I threw several heavy blows at his face, aiming for his nose. Like all bullies, he was a coward when it came to confronting a real man. He gave up without further attempts. What to do with him, boss? One of the security guards asked as he approached the dance floor. Put him in handcuffs. If we videotape this, detain him, call the police, and give them a copy of the video. They will look into it and charge him with whatever charges they think they can prove. Let them know I'm willing to testify. Maybe a detention cell is just what he needs to calm down. Write an official report on this incident. That way, if he is a member of the club, the board can seriously consider expelling him permanently. We don't want people like him ruining the reputation of our establishment, I said. I walked up to the stage and, using one of the orchestra's microphones, said, Dear members and guests, we apologize for what happened. 
we will try to improve our membership selection process in the future. I returned to my seat at the bar without paying any further attention to me. He was just an idiot who drank too much. I have seen many such losers in my short life. About half an hour later, Irene sat down at the bar with her father's friend Jamie. With a smile, I asked the ladies what they would like to drink. Both said, surprise us, and so I did, making them a drink that I called Thomas Light Tea. It was a drink in a tall glass containing double white rum, double flavored vodka, crushed ice, and ginger ale, shaken but not stirred. Both ladies tried it and asked what it was called. I explained what it consisted of and what I called it. What made you come up with such a mixture? asked Irene. I found it helped me get girls' attention during my college years, I replied with a smile. So, you seduced a lot of girls? Irene asked. I blushed and said, gentlemen don't talk about this. Irene noticed that she seemed to be able to make me blush without much effort and asked, are you in love with me? I didn't answer her question. She laughed because apparently my face expressed everything. Thomas, what do you think about that man who tried to hit that woman? Jamie asked, trying to change the subject. He should be thrown out. If he's married, because if he can do this in public, it's much worse for his wife at home. No woman deserves this kind of treatment from anyone. He's not a man, he's just a coward trying to prove himself wrong. You impressed my father very much with your intervention this evening, Irene said quietly. You always end up in the right place at the right time. I didn't have time to respond because I had other orders to fulfill. The next time I looked, they were gone. When the bar closed at 2 o'clock, we started cleaning. I thanked the staff for trusting me enough to work with me. One of them asked, why did the guard call you boss? I laughed and took out my temporary ID to show them. Everyone was impressed, I said. I will officially start work only on Monday. I was just doing what I will always do, put the interests of the club first. I had to call a taxi to get home. While I was waiting for the taxi, the security guard said that I had made a great impression by taking a job that was below my status. Most people in your position wouldn't do this. If you were looking for respect from the staff, you more than earned it. Those who work with you tonight now consider you part of the team and will always support you. You saved these students from losing their daily wages. Sunday morning brunch turned out to be interesting. My parents wanted to know how I learned to be such a good bartender and how I ended up behind the bar. They recognized there were a few things that we didn't know. For example, I worked as a bartender in a bar where gay men hang out to help pay for my studies. This raised questions about my intimate orientation. I said, relax, mom. I don't like men. The bar owner only hired straight men because he had lost a lot of money over the years due to his employees getting emotionally attached to their customers. That's when I told them that I was home until I found a place to live because I found a new job. You quit your job at the accounting firm? Asked my mother. I start a new job on Monday, I replied. I will be the new CFO of the Meadows Golf Club. When security pulled me aside, it was to give me a temporary pass. The general manager had been notified and was about to close the lounge due to the lack of a professional bartender, so I stepped in. The expression on their faces spoke for itself, they were very proud. Dad said my actions last night spoke volumes to everyone. Then I found out that the man I stopped from trying to hit his wife was Irene's husband. I asked my mother about their story. Both were from wealthy families, she explained. She was as easygoing, honest, and straightforward as her father. He considered himself better and smarter than everyone else. This was reflected in his behavior. They were married for just over two years. He had never worked a day in his life and lived off a family trust, serving on two boards of directors. Rumors of bullying began about six months after the wedding. No one had ever seen him do it or try to do it until last night, my mother said. My intervention prevented everyone from seeing a man beating a woman. Keith was very proud that you protected his daughter without even knowing who she was. After his public appearance, Irene decided to leave Evan and stay with her father until she divorced. Keith couldn't believe it, he'd been trying to convince her to do it for months. He felt like a big weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Irene, why did you decide to do this now? Keith asked. 
Irene said that Thomas's behavior made her see how worthless Evan really is. At some point, she began to think that everything was her fault. Was that announcement from Irene before or after Jamie and her arrived at the bar? I asked. Afterward, because everyone was absolutely shocked when you told security to hold him for the police and provide any video we might have, she explained. Keith said proudly, you sent a message to everyone who was there that it doesn't matter who you are or how much you're worth, protecting the club's reputation comes first. I thought mom was done, but she added, Irene needed something to believe in before she could let go and move on. I don't know how, but she found what she needed last night. I then told both of us about our short conversation at the bar when Jamie and her came in for more drinks. Be gentle with her because it will take her a long time to regain her self-esteem, mom said in her mind. You've always been her white knight. Later, my mother helped me move my things into my old room, which fortunately had been updated. You can stay here as long as you want, mom said. We won't even charge you rent. Mom, do you understand how much ridicule I will endure at my age from my friends when they find out that I moved back home? I said, laughing. I would never go through with that. Plus, it would kill any dating chances I had. Most girls looking for a husband wouldn't want to date a man who lives at home with his mom. I thought I had successfully defended my point of view, but she returned, Ed, Irene would like to. Jamie heard her say many times last night that no man compares to Thomas. I think she put you on a pedestal because, in her opinion, this is the second time you saved her. I started work early on my first day because I wanted to learn the inside of the operation before it opened to understand what I was working with. I needed to know each department like the back of my hand. Management for me meant knowing every little detail about how our money was spent and why, as my father used to say, watch the little things because they add up. I was looking at electric golf carts and noticed the brand of batteries we used in them. They were the cheapest on the market. Although the machines themselves were first class, this gave me good insight into the working methods of the person I was replacing. For him, only appearance was important, provided that it cost as little as possible. This explained to me why there had been no growth in this organization for many years. The only reason the bank was still involved was because of the value of the land. I asked the golf shop manager, how many times a week do we have to go out to replace cars due to battery failure? He said, about three times a day or more often because charging takes so long. When we had to do this, we had to close the store because he was involved in training. As a result, the retail outlet did not perform as well as it could have. Do you have the phone number and contact person for our battery supplier? I asked. He went and printed it out. About half an hour later, I told them, new batteries are on the way. They will take the old ones after installing the new ones and add their cost to our bill. These batteries will recharge in six hours but can last for days before the next charge. He seems skeptical, I said. I'm the new CFO. Let everyone know that this store will now be open during regular hours. Also, any suggestions you have that would help increase the sales and efficiency of this store as a standalone business, let me know and explain why. If you can convince me, we'll give it a try. The expression on his face showed complete surprise. I knew he would do whatever it took to make what was under his control better than it had ever been. Every person who worked wanted to feel proud of their work. My next stop was the gardeners to find out what kind of fertilizer we use, and I found the same thing. What we had available was crap. By the time I finished talking to the person in charge, a sincere smile appeared on his face. After three months, the lawns will be significantly improved. We have also created a blade sharpening and equipment maintenance schedule. I approved his request to hire two more full-time employees. Did you know, Mr. Gid Davis, that the club owns enough land to build a second 18-hole golf course, he said. No, I didn't know, but now I do, I answered. Now we need to find the money to develop it. Let's start by making the first 18 holes the best in the state. The gardener knew what I meant because we had just agreed on changes. I gave him a serious challenge, he knew it from our conversation. My last stop before heading to the office was with the chef of our restaurant. I suggested that he open for lunch and develop new dishes for a completely new menu. He was stunned that I wanted him to do this. I challenged him again, do you buy locally whenever possible? If not, then you have my permission to do so. 
I reminded him that the cost of preparing the dish had to be multiplied by three in order for us to stay in the black. This showed him that I knew what I was talking about. He wanted a large smoke for pork, chicken, and beef. I told him to choose a model and find us the best price. Bring it to the office for review and we'll get it done, he put me to the test that same day. When I left, the order had already been placed and was on its way. I realized that he had been dreaming about this for months, for him, it was a dream come true. I knew I had won over the chef by giving him a reason to start believing in me. I walked into the office, and the outgoing controller told me, we are in the red, and the bank needs changes. I know. Keith told me this over two weeks ago. I have been in touch with the bank all this time, he introduced me to his staff. I asked them, which of you knew the board member's wife best? One woman about my mother's age said, I did. I told her to follow me, as I led her to my new office. My name is Susan Colbert, Mr. Davis, she said. Susan, please call me Tom, I said. I want you to organize a dinner this Friday for all the ladies, you and me. Notify the chef to serve us. Tell him we want to be his guinea pigs for some of his new dishes. Let the ladies know that the meeting is scheduled so we can start planning regular ladies' events. They will have to tell us what they want and what they consider necessary. It's time to bring this club into the modern age. Who will be responsible for organizing these events? Art Titty asked Susan. You, I said. I'll get started on that right away, Susan said as she walked out the door with an ecstatic face. Stopping, she turned around and said, You have no idea how long they've been waiting for this. I know all eight will be there. I told the former controller that he could start his retirement early since I had already taken over. As soon as he left the office, I called the bank and informed the manager of what had already been done. After a brief chat, I asked him to casually leak that the restaurant and lounge would be open to the public Thursday through Sunday for six weeks starting next week to give the public a chance to see if they would enjoy joining the membership. I then placed a local ad in the Wednesday paper to promote the fact. On Thursday afternoon, Susan stopped by my office and I waved her in. Everything is confirmed. All eight will be here at 1 p.m., but I had to agree to you making them your famous Thomas ICT. Looks like a couple of ladies have already tried it and loved it. Our chef will prepare six new dishes, three for lunch and three for dinner, for all of us to try. Who's coming as Keith McKibben's significant other? I asked out of curiosity. His daughter Irene, of course, Susan replied. Most of the ladies arrived early. Susan and I carried trays of Thomas ICT. Irene, of course, came last. God, how she looked and she knew it. It seemed like I had betrayed my interest in her by staring at her for too long. I heard someone say that they hadn't seen Irene smile like that in months. The chef brought out his first course and presented it to us. The ladies were delighted to be treated so royally. While they ate lunch, he took the time to explain what was included in each dish and what the retail price would be. The ladies loved the freshness, uniqueness, and presentation of each dish. Each was discussed with the chef, who beamed with pride. One of the ladies asked, why has this not been done sooner? To which the chef replied, the previous supervisor did not believe or support the change. Thank God we now have someone who does. Then we got down to business. By the end of the three-hour meeting, the ladies were delighted. Firstly, we will double the number of dances in the ballroom. Secondly, we will offer it for rent for weddings and use kitchen staff for service if required. The ladies now had to form a decoration committee and plan themed events for the ballroom. I will present their proposal to the council to build a facility that would allow tennis courts to be used year-round but open during the summer. This way, we can justify hiring a tennis professional. We'll set aside one of the private rooms for football widows on Sunday while their spouses watch the game in the lounge. The ladies will have to come up with a new design for this. The last thing I did was a complete surprise to the ladies. I told them I'd like each of them to invite three people they thought would want to see the place for the first time and invited them to try one of the new lunch menu items next Wednesday for free. Before the ladies left, I had to take another round of iced teas, Susan said when we made them. I haven't seen them this excited in years. Is it possible to get council approval for all these changes? Between you and me, the only way I agreed to take this position was if I could make changes to make this place desirable again. 
It took the council three days to agree, I said. Susan, I want you to find a bartender who can fit her schedule around these women's events we're planning. When you organize your first big event, I want to bring a special surprise, I said. After Susan brought the ladies fresh drinks, I left them alone back in the lounge. I compiled the bill for the total cost of the afternoon's activities, wrote on it so that it could be credited towards advertising and marketing. I did this so that each department could be allocated their sales and reflect the profit they were expected to earn. I had just finished when I noticed Irene standing there looking at me. Dad said you would come back to breathe new life into this club, Irene said. Professional and gee, I'm so happy with Alpha that I haven't been for many months. He began bringing in new lines of equipment, new golf bags, and all the accessories, including shoes and clothing. He's already setting up the fitting room. I heard you told him to choose the best. Also, a gardener. Is it true that you are going to add a second 18-hole course within two years? It's up to him, I said. First, he has to make the first 18 holes the best in the state. His problem is not in knowledge but in what materials the previous controller allowed him to use. It seems past management didn't believe you had to spend money to make money. With cheap materials, you end up spending four times as much and getting less or no benefit at all. Trying to save every penny was actually dragging the club into a vortex of slow death. This is why the number of club members was declining. My job is to turn this around before we lose it. What else is in your plans? Asked Irene. I need to double our membership within the next year. To do this, I will have to make and bring in a lot of changes, I said. For example, a small park behind a building that no one uses will be turned into an 18-hole miniature golf course. I hope that club members with children will use it and then come to the restaurant. Once this is done, the restaurant will be open seven days a week. My husband was awarded this week. The council sent him a formal letter revoking his membership. Thanks to you, the police arrested him. I used that to get a restraining order against him, Irene said. Tom, you've done it again. Let me thank you by taking you to dinner somewhere other than this. Sorry, I can't. You're still married, I said. When you are free, then we'll talk. I'm too new in this position to allow gossip to spread, especially with a member of the club. I need to establish myself first. Good rescue, Irene said sadly. Even when we were young, you were in control. This made you stand out even then from everyone I knew. Even the kitchen staff said that you are one of those who will go far. I walked up to her without saying a word, knowing that we were completely alone. I hugged her before she could say anything. I lowered my head to hers and pressed my lips to hers, giving her a deep and long French kiss. As I released her, looking into her eyes, I said, it's just too soon for both of us. Then I left. Jamie found Irene sitting alone and crying. What's wrong, honey? I spoke to Thomas privately for a few minutes, and he said it was too early for both of us, Irene said. What's bad about it? He was just honest and truthful, Jamie said. I know, Jamie. He doesn't want gossip going around, and I agree, Irene said tearfully. The problem is the way he kissed me. When he finished, I knew exactly how he felt about me. So bad, huh? Jamie said. No wonder you're crying, my poor thing. No, this is good. With this kiss, he declared his intentions to me. It was his way of telling me that I was his, Irene said with a big smile as tears streamed down her cheeks. It reminded me of all the dreams and desires I had for him when he was mowing my dad's lawn. Jamie wondered if Irene was wrong in her conclusions because she was still so fragile. Keith McKibben would dance for joy if he could. He never would have believed that everything would turn out so well. Bill Davis has done wonders in his new position, his knowledge of how things worked was amazing. In the seven months he's been here, he's improved productivity and reduced overall costs in ways no one thought possible. This led to his next promotion, but he deserved this promotion himself. Keith learned a valuable lesson. He never would have thought that trying to save his daughter would give him so much. Bill's son, Thomas, turned out to be the best decision the club's board ever made. His daughter Irene was happier than she had been in years. She agreed to seek help to cope with what she had experienced. He finally got what he wanted, his daughter freed from Evan McBride. 
Evan looked like his first wife. Both were selfish and thought only of themselves. They seemed to care, but over time, they proved otherwise. This forced him to devote more time to work than to his daughter. Irene paid the price for this when she left them. He tried to be a better father to her. He was proud of how she had grown. Her white knight unknowingly brought them both back to life. It's been four months since I was hired. I just returned from a meeting with a very satisfied bank manager. I used my signing bonus as collateral to convince the bank to agree to my terms. They just returned it to me after further tense negotiations. That's because Meadow Golf Club just contributed a serious amount of money toward its overall debt. Our membership has increased by 20% in the last four months. I used this annual fee of $3,000 to pay off our bank loan. For the first time in five years, the club has effectively cut its debt in half. Now, you have to book your golf tee times several days in advance. The lawns improved so quickly that they were publicly called the best in the area. Sales at the golf shop increased 25% due to car rentals and new product lines. It was becoming successful, but there were still changes to come. We transformed the golf club from an operation that was barely breaking even to one that was now generating a very healthy monthly profit. The local newspaper reviewed the restaurant's lunch and dinner menus, calling our new dishes a success. Our lounge and restaurant were now permanently open to the public from Thursday to Sunday. The growth in food and beverage sales has been fantastic. As a result, requests for new memberships have been stable. Some university employees joined, which added to our authority. Thomas Ice Tea was now the most popular women's drink. When a woman ordered it, everyone knew what she wanted. A new roof had to be installed over the tennis court for the winter, so we began our search for a tennis professional. Our new mini golf has become a family attraction, as has our community pool. As a result, new members were happy to bring their children for the day and then return for dinner and dancing later. We now had a fitness instructor for hire. The pool, small gym, and tennis court were used a lot by her. In a short time, the club members fell in love with her. The elderly enjoyed using the pool for exercise. From the moment we opened until we closed, there were always people around. For me, it meant money. The ballroom was booked for the first time for a wedding evening with dinner and dancing afterwards. The chef was delighted with this, and so was I. This opened up a new source of income for us. This Sunday, while the men watched the game on the big screens in the lounge, the ladies held their first big event. Susan Colbert was shocked when I told her to include today's Chippendale-style modern dancing. I arrived just as the event was ending to see how it went. I ordered an old-fashioned cocktail from the waitress while I was sitting at the bar. When she brought it to me, she said the bartender had to look it up in our new computer system. Keith saw me sitting alone and rolled over to me. Thomas, you never told me how you convinced the bank to agree to your plans, Keith said. I learned today from the branch manager that you used your signing bonus as collateral when I informed him that we accepted his membership request. You took a risk, and I'm proud of it because it's something I've done many times myself. Then I think you should know that he is blocked again for the future of the club using it. We secured funding for a second 18-hole course. I know Arnold Palmer's grandson and got his help to have his grandfather design it. You could tell Keith was amazed and very excited. Keith added that I had put together something he thought was impossible. The board has already approved a huge raise for me that will start on the first of next month, Keith added. I can't imagine what a blessing I have been to the club and to him personally. How soon will we start expanding, asked Keith. I'll let you know after, after I've talked to you. Hell, above it all, I answered. A few minutes later, Jamie and Irene entered. Irene automatically sat next to me, snuggling as close as possible, both their faces lit up. She put her hand in mine under the table, and I didn't pull it away. Irene made it clear in her own way that she was very pleased. Keith and I learned that the first women's event was considered a success by everyone involved. I gave all the credit to Susan. Oh no, you won't, Jamie said. Susan told us that you were the one who ordered the dancers. They became the hit of the day. This will be talked about for weeks. There were more than 40 of U.S. who took part in the event. Everyone agrees it was worth the money. Irene said, the way everything was organized kept us all in a state of excitement. We didn't understand why we would put our names in the hat until three names were pulled for a complete head-to-toe transformation. 
Their transformations were amazing. Everyone agreed that these three had never looked so good. Their three husbands are in for an exciting evening. Each of them was shocked to learn that there would be no additional charge for this, and they went home in new outfits. The food the chef prepared for us was great. It was obvious that it was created for female taste. I think we all overate, Jamie said. Since you came in and started making changes, it's become a trendy place again. He's not finished yet. Thanks to him, the club has now secured funding for a second 18-hole course, Keith added. Our new membership inquiries are very busy. This is the first time in many years that we have seen this kind of activity. Well, Dad said, Irene, I'm sorry to interrupt this, but I'm taking Thomas to a private dinner that's long overdue, and I won't take no for an answer this time. This is the last chance before he gets out of prison, and I'm going to take it. Our divorce is getting very messy. We went to a restaurant in the city center. I asked her what prompted her to do this. I had to do something, she said. Many women have discussed introducing you to some of their daughters or relatives. It seems like most people think you're a good candidate to be their husband and that you will achieve success in life. I'm not dateable, I still live with my mom, I laughed. I know, she told a lot of ladies about it and added that you used to work at a fancy bar, Irene laughed. I'll kill her when I get home, I said seriously. No need. I told everyone that we were dating, Irene replied. If they want to marry you, they will have to go through me. My announcement surprised everyone, so expect a lot of questions from your mom. She's very excited about us being together. I returned home around 11 at night. My mom was too excited to sleep, she had a hundred questions. I didn't answer any, the only thing I said ironically before going to bed was good night, Irene, I'll see you in my dreams. Monday morning, as soon as Susan arrived, she was supposed to give me a report on how everything went. There were demonstrations of fashionable clothes, hairstyles, makeup, and some special items to wear in the bedroom. While the three makeups were being done, ten male dancers performed on the floor. After the big opening, the food arrived. As a group, they decided that we should do this at least once a month. The participating vendors were also very enthusiastic, as most of the items they brought in they did not take back. They decided as a group that we should have our own hair salon here. We could use the smallest meeting room for this. Do you think we could do this? I replied that I would check with the technical department to see how much it would cost before I could agree to it. Susan sent out word that same day that I would find a way. On Saturday night, there was a 60s style ballroom dinner and dance. Those who came were required to wear clothing from the period, dishes were prepared to reflect what was popular at the time. On Friday, Irene dyed her hair black and she was going to buy me a wig. I found a suitable outfit among my father's old clothes stored in the attic, mom washed it and ironed it. In my opinion, I look strange, mom said. I look great, I said. Yes, sure, she replied. Remember, we were teenagers back then. She convinced me, Irene attached the wig to my head. When I walked in to pick her up, Keith took some pictures of us because we looked like Sonny and Cher. I had glasses and a bandana on my head, neither of us understood what Keith was talking about. The party went great until midnight, the event was sold out. The winners in the category of best costumes were selected, we were not one of them. Irene and I were on the dance floor when we heard an argument coming from the foyer. I ran from the dance floor as quickly as possible. By the time I got there, one of the two guards was lying on the floor, stabbed. The second was struggling with Irene's estranged husband, Evan. He saw me heading towards him and pushed the remaining guard away, taking his knife. He rushed towards me, shouting that I was dead. I rushed towards him, knowing that I only had one chance. I jumped, pushing off the floor and pointed my legs at his face. As he rushed towards me, we both fell hard. I got up before him and kicked him hard in the groin. When he fell, he dropped the knife, which I threw aside. The guard handed me the handcuffs, and I put them on Evan, so his hands were cuffed behind his back. This time he will serve much longer. Look at Evan, the man who brought you down twice, both times without getting a scratch, Irene said in full anger tears streaming down her face because she knew he was coming for both of us. If I could marry him tomorrow, I would. I just realized that I've loved him since he saved my life all those years ago, and now he's doing it again. 
Thomas is a real man in every way compared to a piece of crap like you. I will never give up, you are facing a long prison sentence. Remember what you pushed out of your life because you needed to feel like a real man, someone shouted that the police and ambulance were on their way. Two hours later, we left the building, everyone knew that Irene never left my side, even in front of the police. We went to the hospital to see how the guard was doing, his wife was there. I apologized to her for not coming sooner and informed her that he would receive his full salary until he was cleared to return to work. I told her to let me know the cost of her share of the medical care, and we would send a check to cover the cost. She was amazed that the club took such a step. We stayed with her until her husband came out of surgery, the wounds were not as deep as we thought. I thought we were all lucky. It was almost six in the morning when we arrived at her father's house, we were both exhausted. We sat in the living room, drinking coffee and going over the events of the night. That's when it hit her, and her tears started flowing. Her ex was going to kill me first and then her, I just held her, knowing that she needed to talk it out. It seems we fell asleep, when we woke up, fresh coffee had already been prepared and brought. A few minutes later, Keith joined us. Of course, both our parents were informed of what happened the night before. Keith called them and they were on their way. My mother brought me a change of clothes. I could use the guest room to shower and change clothes. The cook came in and asked what we wanted to eat. I ordered a bacon and cheese omelet and two slices of bread with butter and peanut butter. Irene said it sounded perfect for her too. We were busy eating when my parents arrived. All three wanted to hear my version of events. I explained everything, including our visit to the hospital. Bill, I have to say, the best hire I ever made was hiring your son to mow my lawn, Keith said. It's still bearing fruit. You should be proud of him. I know I'm proud, Dad. Enough of this heroism, Irene said. If I have my way, he will be your son-in-law for many years. Tom will always do what's right. All three of our parents looked at me, waiting for an answer. We still have to wait until she gets divorced, I told everyone. The expressions on all four faces showed that this was not what they wanted to hear. I smiled and added, because I don't condone him getting engaged to a married woman. Irene looked at me and said, smart guy. You did that on purpose. Then she gave me a deep kiss. It took another four months before her divorce was finalized. Evan McBride received 10 to 22 years for attempted murder in two cases. The Meadows Golf Club was rented out for our formal engagement session, which included an open bar and free drinks. It cost Irene's father, Keith, almost $110,000. The chef outdid himself by creating a menu for both dinner and late-night snacks. As a result, we received over 100 new membership requests. We began construction of a second 18-hole course. The ladies now had their salon, employing two full-time and two part-time employees. Our final month of operations generated our largest net revenue ever as each division set new records. Keith and I sat in the lounge having drinks while waiting for Jamie and Irene to finish their treatments in the salon. Have you already started looking for a house? Asked Keith. No, we haven't started. Irene is busy planning her wedding to Jamie, I said. Where are you going to gather your courage and admit that you love Jamie? Look at me, what I can offer her, Keith said. Ever since my back was broken in an industrial accident, I have become half-human because I can't walk. She won't want me. Prove you're right. Ask her. What do you have to lose? I answered. Take the initiative. Your daughter did it. You've been dating for two years now, so something is keeping her here. You can always go and choose a ring together. We heard the ladies enter the room. It's now or never, my friend. I said. As soon as the lady sat down, Jamie said, I love you. Isn't it time we went and picked out your engagement ring? It's long overdue, Jamie said, with tears in her eyes. What motivated you, wise future son-in-law? Keith said. Okay, we can sell my apartment and help them buy their house, Jamie said. If Irene doesn't mind, of course. We don't mind, mom, said Irene, but we'll manage anyway. As soon as I sell the house that I got after the divorce. The problem is that I cook every day, so we didn't really have time to start looking. Cooking lessons? I was surprised with whom. 
With your mother, Irene replied, and with the cook at dad's house. Although it was difficult for your parents when your mom stayed home full time, it worked out well. They were even able to pay off their mortgage. We will have the house paid off in full. I know the way you include family activities for the club reflects your feelings about fatherhood. This is important to you. I know you will put the needs of our children first. So, I'll work until we have our first child, and then I'll be done until the kids are grown. And how many children do you think we will have? I asked. I want at least three, Irene smiled, but if they're all girls, we'll keep trying until we have a son. Keith and Jamie smiled. Then we will invest the money and create an educational fund for our grandchildren. Our wedding was a small, quiet ceremony just for family. It was broadcast live to everyone in the ballroom. We got married in Keith's yard in front of the Justice of the Peace, standing in front of a tulip tree in full bloom. Keith was my best man, Jamie was my bridesmaid. Keith later told my father that it was the greatest honor of his life. When the broadcast ended, Irene told everyone that she was pregnant. Our firstborn was a girl named after my mother and her stepmother. Two more girls followed before we had a son, whom we named William Keith after both grandfathers. To this day, all four of our children are spoiled beyond belief. Our daughters still don't understand why their mother sometimes cries when she watches me mow the lawn. What do you think of our story today? I really like that the husband found his happiness at the end of the story. What do you think? Write in the comments. See you in the next video.